curiosity to what's here. And then begin to wiggle your fingers. Just exploring simple movements. And the pleasure of simple movements. I just mentioned to some of you in the Qigong practice that the sky earlier this morning was one of those really incredible sunrises. And the sky shot with oranges and purples and yellows and ochres. And as I watched it, I turned myself upside down and the sky appeared like an ocean, rolling waves of clouds. So the ocean and the clouds share this similar pattern, similar pattern of waves. And we too, as we breathe, share that same pattern, waves of breath. And I want to open with short lines from the 18th century Zen poet Ryo Kan, who wrote the following. To find the Buddhist law, drift east and west, come and go, entrusting yourself to the waves. To find the Buddhist law, drift east and west, come and go, entrusting yourself to the waves. So as you breathe in, allow the arms to rise overhead, stretching out, riding a wave of breath. And very gently, folks, begin to walk your feet in, bend your knees. And slowly swish your knees side to side, like gentle waves. And now as you come back to center, and bring your feet hip distance apart, Walk them in and bring your hands either side of your hips. You can gently press your palms down and in a very gentle way, just curling the tailbone and lifting the sacrum off the floor. Keep it really low, mini bridge, and then roll the spine back down, sacrum down. Take a breath in. As you exhale, very small movement just from the lower pelvis, tailbone, sacrum lifting keeping most of your back on the floor. And as you lower the sacrum down, tip the pubic bone forward so your back arches slightly away from the floor. Just rocking forwards and back, small tipping of the pelvis, taking you in and out of flexion and extension in the very lowest part of your spine. Now you might start to gradually increase the size of the waves, each time lifting a tiny bit higher, just breathing freely. You don't have to follow any particular pattern. But following what feels good. And each time as your hips start to get higher, you might take a pause and float the arms overhead. Take a breath here. And then slowly curling down through the spine, bring the hands back down. Again, you might include the arms now as you float and lift. And then return curling down. The pelvis and the arms moving in symphony, riding the same waves of breath. Let's take a couple more. This time as the hips come down, start to reach the fingertips towards the front of your mat. Slowly lift the chin and uh, the chest away from the floor, 
curl up just so you feel the abs kick in a little bit and then lower back down lift the hips float the arms behind you and now starting to exhale as you lower back down as the sacrum comes down lift the chin and chest reach forwards long exhale inhale arms overhead hips lift and continuing exhale curling down and then curling up reaching forwards Coming back, hips and arms lift. Now this time as you curl down, reach the fingers, lift the chin, start to float the feet, bring the legs together, breathe here. Shins parallel to the ground. Two more breaths. Shoulders soft. And then lower down, again, taking bridge, inhale, arms overhead, press through the heels. As you exhale, curl down, scoop up, knees and feet float. And then straight back down, feet down, inhale, arms overhead. Just two more times, exhaling, awakening the front and the back of the body, alternating. Now this time as you curl up, lift the feet, lift the knees, take hold behind the knees, and start to rock forwards until you come up. From here, folks, bring the soles of the feet together, Baddha Konasana. Go easy on yourself though. Take your feet quite far away so it's not too strong. Fingertips either side of you. As you breathe in, sweep the right, uh, sweep the left arm rather forwards and up alongside the ear and gently sweep it back, switching sides. Get a soft, gentle momentum, that's it, folks. And this time, really place the palm down, press into the palm to lift, and then switch. Listen closely as you take your right hand back, lift the left arm, pause, start to roll to the outside of the right hip, bring the knees together, reaching up and maybe looking over the right shoulder and then slowly return knees butterfly open and the other arm comes to the side knees stack and just continuing slow and you can keep adding on to this movement so this time as you come over to the left reach the right arm by the ear option to start to straighten the right leg out point the foot if you have the space and then slowly coming back. Look at this rocking feeling. This time as the leg comes out, option to catch the ankle or reach for the foot and sweep it back. Two more times each side. And if you find yourself migrating forwards on your mat, me too. <laughs> Waves of movement rolling this time as you come over to the left pause here reach the right arm by the ear straighten the right leg and now bring that right leg to the floor and point it in front of you option to take a side bend from here reach the right arm forwards towards the toes and take it back lift the hips Take it back. And now if you're feeling a little bit more jazzy and dynamic, you might even lift the hips and come onto the knee, side plank, and lower back down. I'm taking two more. That's it, folks. And then over we go, second side. Bring the feet back into that diamond shape. Over we come, left arm by the ear, option to straighten the leg. But then take the leg straight down your mat, side bend, sliding into it. Again, it's no right or wrong with this, just feeling in, lower the hand, option to lift up onto the knee and to return twice more. From here, come all the way back round to center. This time, cross the ankles 
As you cross the ankles, could you draw the feet in and perhaps rolling over onto all fours. As you find the hands and knees, walk your hands in front of your shoulders, two or three inches. Inhale, shoulders above wrists. Exhale like a wave to the shore. And cobra. Tuck your toes down with dog. From your downward dog, inhale, plank position. Lower your knees, lower your hips, ribs, heart. Keep it wave-like, rather than taking chaturanga. Keep it very ripply. Again, plank, knees, hips, ribs, heart. One more time. As you settle into your downward dog, inhale, lift the right leg. Bend the knee, open the hip if it feels good. Exhale, step the foot forwards, back knee down. Crescent lunge rising. From here, bring your hands to the inside of that front foot. Tuck your back toes and slowly creep to the back of your mat. Crescent lunge, arms rising. Long breath in. And the hands down, creep to the front of your mat. From here, step the feet together, front of your mat. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold. Chair pose, breathing in. Keep the arms parallel to the floor. Just one breath. And then folding back down. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, folding back down. Last time, inhale, chair pose. Folding back down, walk your feet back, downward dog. And then flowing through your first vinyasa, modifying however you wish to. Downward dog, five breaths. Allow the sitting bones to rise. Lovely, Tracy. Great, Shadi. Excellent. And sit, Rosie. Feet hip distance apart, folks. A little bit closer together than the shoulders. Although Mr. Ayenga might have something to say about that. <laughs> when you're ready, left leg rises. Bend the knee, open the hip for a moment. Calm step forwards, back knee down. Inhale, arms rise. Bring your fingertips to the floor inside that front ankle. Lift your back knee. We're going to creep to the back of the mat. This time, as an option, you could keep the hands off the ground as you transition. It's a little bit trickier. Or you might use the fingertips still. Crescent. And then transitioning, either hands down or hands off the floor. Step forwards, forward fold. From here, bring your left heel towards your bum, flamingo, right knee can be bent. From here, start to rise into a one-legged chair, squeeze the knees together, folding back down, return the foot. Right heel comes in, flamingo. One-legged chair, breathing in, folding, breathing out. Lift up halfway, step or jump back, vinyasa. Taking a moment to settle into your downward facing dog. I'm gonna keep the practice very flowy today. Inhale, right leg lifts, scorpion tail. Exhale, knee to the left elbow, scoop in through the belly button. Take the leg back, step forwards, high lunge. Rising, take a moment here, press into the ball of the back foot. Slowly open the arms to the right. So we're going to go through the sequence kind of slowly, taking a couple breaths in each position. And then after we've done this, we're going to flow through the whole thing really rhythmically. Warrior two. From your warrior two, spread the toes, get a feel for it. 
gently reverse. And offer the right hand forwards, followed by the left. Carry the sun to the back of the mat, bend the knees, travel. Warrior two. Take a moment here. Feel the back leg strong, use the legs. Reverse. Offer both hands forwards. Travel low and slow through the hips. Warrior two. Reverse. Reach both arms forwards, reach for the sun. We're gonna take the fingertips back towards the left foot, straighten the front leg to touch the earth. Lift your right toes. The fingertips sweep round to touch the ground. From here, all the way round, hands around the front foot, step back, vinyasa. And we're gonna do that to the second side. As you breathe in, left leg lifts. Knee to the right elbow. Wakey, wakey, obliques, a hand back. Step forwards, high lunge. Take a moment, lift the pubic bone, engage the glutes of the back leg. Arms opening to the left, standing twist. Often when you twist, the knee will retreat. Keep the knee above the ankle, but resist the temptation to back bend. Start to find center. Warrior two, take a moment, find your warrior legs. When you're ready, reversing, both arms reaching forwards, carry the sun low and slow, bend the knees. Warrior two, again, take a moment, check your back toes are turned in and reverse. Offer the arms, carry the sun. Warrior two. Again, reversing, this time reaching for the sun as we prepare to touch the earth behind us. Straighten the front leg, lift the front toes, back knee bends, touch the earth. And sweeping all the way back around that circle, hands down, vinyasa. Waves of breath, waves of sensation. Five breaths in your downward dog. Janie battling the cat. <laughs> We're gonna take that exact same sequence but moving really fluidly in one continuous flow between the postures. I'll be there with you. Inhale, right leg lift, scorpion tail. Knee to the left elbow, maybe touching. Take the leg back, split dog. Big step forwards, high lunge, rising. Arms opening to the right. High lunge, warrior two. Reversing. Reaching the arms forwards, carry the sun across your mat, low and slow. Warrior two, reversing straight away. Reach for the sun, carry it across your mat. Warrior two, back toes turn in. Reversing. This time reaching for the sun and then touching the earth behind you, straighten the front leg, touch the earth. Circle all the way back round, vinyasa. Right leg could lift if you fancy it. Downward dog, left leg rises, scorpion tail. Knee to the right elbow. Split dog. High lunge, breathing in. Twist on the exhale. Center, warrior two. Reverse, reaching forwards, getting even lower as you carry the sun. Keep the movement continuous, reaching, carrying the sun, reversing, reaching, and now touching the earth, straighten the front leg, touching and sweeping, vinyasa, left leg could lift.
downward facing dog, child's pose or dolphin, five or more breaths. So we're gonna take the same sequence and add on a few little optional extras as we go this time. So as you find your downward facing dog, inhale, lift the right leg, scorpion tail. Knee to the left elbow, pause, hover here. Option to straighten the leg and take fall and triangle. Left arm comes up into the side plank. Sweep the leg back, scorpion tail. Option to take wild thing or to breathe here. If you're taking wild thing, take one big lift of the hips. Everybody split dog. Right foot steps forwards, high lunge, arms rising. This time palms together for the twist. Maybe you take prayer twist. If you're in prayer twist, option to lift the back leg, floating. And then slowly returning, high lunge, warrior two, reverse. This time as you reach forwards, pause here, option to breathe here or to take half moon. Maybe right hand comes down, maybe not, maybe you float. Not so long in the poses today, keeping it fluid. Bend the front knee again and then carry the sun to the back of the mat, left foot down. Warrior two. Reversing. Reach the arms forwards, maybe you breathe here, maybe you take half moon, second side. That's it, Kelvin, straighten the back leg, stack your hips, Rosie. Lovely cat. Return the foot, carry the sun to the front of the mat. Warrior two, reversing. Reach for the sun, prepare to touch the earth, all the way back, touch the ground. This time, come back into a high lunge, lift the left heel, turn the hips, warrior three. Point the back foot, get really long. And start to lower the fingertips, standing split, right, left leg coming up, right knee could be bent. Those of you who want to play with a little handstand option to spread the fingers, lock the elbows and push and take two or three little hops if you're working on that. Everybody step your feet together front of the mat. Chair pose, breathing in. Folding, breathing out. Lift up halfway. Coming into a squat this time, knees come out, palms together. You might breathe here or you might take crow pose. Keeping it a little spicy this morning. <laughs> if you're coming into crow, really press the fingertips down, draw the shoulders back. That's it, Rosie. Yes, lift the head. Great, Janie. Lovely Shadi, step forward, jump back, Vinyasa. Child's pose or dog or dolphin. That's it, Emma, lift those hips. Great, Alex, yeah, long spine. Be with your breath fully and completely. Begin to find your downward dog for the second side, folks. And the left leg rises, scorpion tail. Knee to the right elbow, option one, breathe here, option two, straighten the leg, fall and triangle, right arm comes up, that's it, Ellie, lift the hips, beautiful, everybody, yes, Saska, and split dog, scorpion tail, option one, breathe here, option two, wild thing, take a moment in wild thing, and then return, split dog, 
Big step forwards, high lunge. Take your time. Palms together. If you're getting a little breathless, that's okay. It's, you know, continuous flow today, right? <laughs> Turn to your left. And option to take the elbow outside the knee or maybe even floating the right leg. And then starting to release high lunge to warrior two. Reversing. Once again, reaching forwards into half moon. You could keep the hand off the floor. And if that's easy, start to lift onto the ball of the left foot, lift your left heel in a floating half moon. And then return the foot, carry the sun, warrior two. Reversing, taking your time. And again, half moon. Option to lift the right heel. Ballet calves, right? And then return, travel through the hips. Continuous movement, reaching forwards for the sun and then touching the earth. As you reach forwards, back heel lifts, warrior three. Really point your back foot. That's it, Fiona. Great, Lily. That's it, Finn. Lower the fingertips down, standing split. Right leg coming up. Option for a little handstand play. If you want to lock out the elbows, those of you who are in the workshop, revisit what we went over. Great, Shadi. And step the feet together. Inhale to chair pose. Folding again, lift up halfway, coming into the squat, send the knees out. Again, you could take crow pose here, or if you're staying in the squat, this time walk the fingertips a little bit further forwards, seeing if you might find a little bit more space and length in the spine. Those of you in crow, really lift up, feet up. And then stepping or gently jumping back, vinyasa. Downward facing dog. Slowly lower to the knees, folks, child's pose. And take a couple of big breaths out. <sighs> From here, slowly come to a kneeling position. Walk your hands in. Knees could be a little bit wider. Fingertips come either side of you. Lean into the left fingertips. Sweep the right arm across and alongside the ear like we did earlier. And then gently switch sides. If this is super uncomfortable in the knees, you could take this in a cross-legged position instead. Now this time as the left fingertips come down, opt to breathe here or to bring the palms slightly further behind you. And as the right arm comes by the ear, you could lift the hips a little bit and then switch. One more time each side. Beautiful everybody, yes, that's it Kelvin. Really allow that top arm to be long and spacious. And from here, coming forward, step your right foot forwards, back knee down. Option to pad your back knee up with your mat if it's helpful. Lift through the pubic bone, squeeze the glutes. We're gonna take the lunge in two ways today. So first way, no back bend, <laughs> tuck the tailbone, ribs in. But let the arms dangle today. So hands free, let them just rest. Think about sending your left hip forwards and your right hip back a little. So there's a feeling of 
from both of the front of the hip bones being equidistant, if you were to take a, a stick across the front of your hips, they wouldn't be turned out diagonally. That kind of stick would be parallel to the front edge of your mat. Now, option to remain here, or if it feels good, still squeezing the left glutes, send the hips forwards and down. And the knee will start to move forwards, maybe even above the toes, maybe even beyond. Keep squeezing the glutes, lift the pubic bone. Yeah, arms free. The hands being free is going to encourage you to use the deep abdominals and the pelvic floor to lift up and not collapse. Two more breaths. From here, slowly take that right leg back into uh, hands and knees position with the right leg lengthened behind you. Bend the knee, a little scorpion tail. Option to take this into a back bend, lifting the head, lifting the foot towards each other. And then bring the knee towards the nose, scoop in, push the floor away. Two more times. Inhale, scorpion tail, arching the back if it feels good. Exhale, knee to nose. One more time. Come back to all fours. Lift the right arm up to the side and let's thread the needle. Reach the arm through, coming onto the elbow or maybe even the shoulder. Tuck your toes. If your neck feels pretty good here, left forearm behind the back. If you feel steady, option to straighten the left leg, slide the toes back and turn the chest to the sky. The sky like the ocean looking down. Three calm breaths. From here, start to release. Come back to all fours. This time, take the left leg out to the side, what I sometimes call the Kylie position. We're gonna sit all the way back towards the right heel and then maneuvering yourself to bring both legs forwards, seated. Bend your left knee, foot by the right knee and open the hip to the side. From here, bend your right knee and catch either side of the right foot. Sit tall as you lift the foot off the floor. Really lift away from your lower back. An option to straighten the leg a little bit or a lot of it. If the leg is really straight, you might even lift the chin towards the shin and draw the leg and the shin, uh, the chin and the shin towards each other. Heron pose. Four more breaths. That's it, folks. From here, release, slide the right leg long. Take the left hand behind you. Remember that transition to side plank we did at the beginning? Right arm comes up, hips lift, reaching. Circle the top arm a couple times. Hmm. And then return once again, cross the ankles, the shins, bring the feet in. Option one, roll over the legs and come to all fours. Or option two, with the feet tucked in, Bring your hands either side of the knees. You might watch me for a moment. As I bring my palms flat either side of the knees, I'm going to press into my fingertips and lift my hips. And I'm going to draw my knees in towards my chest, making my feet feel lighter and lighter. And then maybe jumping back. Chaturanga. Beautiful, everybody. Settling into down dog. And your left foot steps forwards, back knee down. You can give your wrists a little circle. And then let the arms settle down, hands free. Again, glutes on, tailbone tucked a little. 
And that conscious sense of sending your right front hip forwards. So really pressing this part of the hip forwards and allowing the left hip to move back slightly. And we hold. And as you press forwards and squeeze the glutes, what I get a sense of in my body is this whole area around this right hip feels very strong and lifted. It feels really supported, almost buttressed. So rather than kind of collapsing into it, it feels like everything's being drawn up and in and strong. So maybe exploring how you can find that sort of feeling. Option to breathe here, or to now send the hips forwards and down. Keep the heart lifted, radiant. Keep the right glutes a little squeezed. Yeah, that's it folks, lovely fin. Let the arms just dangle. Start to release, left leg comes back, little scorpion tail. Knee to chest. And two more times. And from here, return, left arm comes up, feed the arm through. Tuck the toes. Tucking the toes tends to help keep the hips level so the legs don't slide around. And right arm could come behind the back. Right leg could straighten out behind you. Start to release all fours and take that right leg out to the side, Kylie stretch very briefly. And then send the hips back. Let's find a way to bring the legs forwards. From here, right hip opens the side. You can bring the foot closer or higher up the thigh if that feels good and then catching the left foot. I don't know why, whenever I catch my foot in these poses, I have this habit of um, bringing my thumb in between my big toe and my second toe and bringing my other thumb in between the little toe. It's quite strong. I don't know, I like that toe spacing. <laughs> Opportunity to stretch the toes. It's just something I do. It's not official. Heron pose, maybe with the toes really spread. You could wiggle your right heel in closer if that gives you more support. You could take the chin to the shin. Two more calm breaths. Heron pose is a very strong hamstring stretch. When you catch the foot with both hands, it tends to be a whole lot deeper because there's fewer deviations you can make, which if you hold with one hand, you can kind of turn out and use your inner thigh more. There's no escape in heron pose. <laughs> Slowly release from here, crossing the ankles or the shins. And again, you could tuck the feet in. Maybe you roll over, maybe you bring the hands down. As you bring the hands down, press, 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 bring the knees into the chest and step or jump back. Vinyasa. From here, we're gonna to come to a cross-legged position and lie down for just a few moments. So, Either jumping forwards, just finding your way around. <clears throat> As you lie down on the back, really lengthen the legs. Bring your right knee into your chest. And now listen closely. 
bring your attention to your left leg. Point the left foot, like ballet style, point the foot. Can you press the left thigh down into the ground, really root the thigh? And final thing, your left hand, can you now place your left palm on top of your left thigh, fingers together and pointing, like you're pressing the palm into the thigh, the thigh into the ground, and the toes point away. The left arm and left leg will stay like this. Option to breathe here, or option to catch the right big toe or ankle in the right hand. You might start to straighten the leg. If you're holding the ankle or the foot, really straighten the leg, but keep that left thigh and hand pressing down. Option one, stay here. Option two, bring your chin towards your shin. Curl up into a crunch position. Keep the left foot pointing and draw your shin and the right, uh, draw your right shin and chin towards each other for five. You'll feel this in the abs for four. Left heel down for three, left thigh down, two, one, release. And as we switch, the left knee comes in. Point the right foot. Press the right thigh down. Right palm, fingers closed and pointed on top of the right thigh. Really root that whole right side of your body Option one to breathe here, or to catch the ankle or the big toe. The leg doesn't have to be totally straight, but eventually working towards that. Final option, curl the chin, shoulders off the floor, bring the shin towards the chin, and eventually they may touch. Right thigh down, point the right foot, five, four, Three, two, one, release, stretch out. <sighs> so I'm gonna give you two options here. The first option is simply to repeat whatever you just did, lying down on the back. The second option is to come up for front splits. So if you're repeating, stay where you are. If you're coming into front splits, come back to all fours. If you have a brick or bricks, they can be really useful when you work into a front split. And we'll start with the right foot forwards, left knee down. So if you have bricks or if you don't, just bring the hands down to rest either side of you. And I tend to straighten my front leg first. So I tend to straighten my right leg and then wiggle the heel, slide it forwards. Don't go to your maximum depth straight away if you're working in this version. Tuck your back toes. That generally will help you keep the hips a bit more squared, which is more healthful long-term. And now start to inch the left knee back behind you. Pause. Could you lift through the pubic bone, lift the chest? You might breathe here, or you might find a little bit more space. We're now gonna make the split quite active. Those of you who do the intense class with me, we do this all the time. So press down through the hands, lift the left knee off the floor, the toes are tucked. Think about sending and pressing your left hip forwards and drawing your right hip back. In fact, make your right heel slide towards you two centimeters, so towards you, not away from you. Pull the right heel in. Notice how that makes the stretch deeper. Four, three, two, one. Release the knee. Take this a little bit more passively if that feels good. Let yourself melt. Another five, four, three. Good, Emma, nice and tall. Two, left it forwards more though. One, slowly wiggle out. And everybody give yourself a moment in a neutral position. Oh yeah, do what you need to to release the hips. 
And then we shall switch sides. So those of you on the back, switching legs, if you haven't already. And the version on the back is really excellent because the pelvis has to be squared. You can really tell that the hips are squared. Otherwise, coming into the lunge with the left foot forwards, that's it, Kelvin. Slide the front heel forwards first, tuck the back toes. Lovely, Alex. Yes, I like that version. It's really active. Great, cat. Not going to your maximum, giving yourself a little bit of negotiation space. Good, Rosie, that's it. Yeah, chin to the shin. Back knee starts to inch away. Keep those back toes tucked. <clears throat> And then back knee comes off the floor, make it active. If you like micro details, what you're doing is you're lifting your left kneecap and engaging the quads on the front thigh. Front thigh, quads are on. Back thigh, it's the glutes and hamstrings that are on. Squeeze the glutes as you lift the leg. Make your left heel slide towards you two centimeters. That will square your hips and deepen the hamstring stretch, usually in the back of the knee. Four three, two, one. Lower the back knee down, allow it to be a little bit more passive for another five, four, three, two, and one. Extricate yourself from whatever position you are in. Do what you need to to reorganize the hips. And we shall all meet lying down on the back. As you come to lie down, let's take a beautiful happy baby, holding knees, ankles or feet. And after front splits, it can be really nice to take external rotation in the hip. So you could straighten one leg out to the side. And then switching. And there goes my hip. <laughs> if it feels good, you could even straighten both legs. And now whether you're in happy baby or whether you have the legs straight, could you start to press the sacrum down towards the ground? Slowly lower the sacrum down. Calm breath. Slowly release. The body is quite well prepped for back bends because we've done a lot of hip flexor work. So if you would like to explore bridge or wheel pose, now could be a good time to explore that. If you're feeling like back bends aren't something you want to do right now, this time in the morning, I'm gonna invite you to take a delicious twist instead. So if you're taking the delicious twist, um, walk your feet in. Send your hips to the right a few inches and then cross the right thigh over the left thigh and take the knees to the left. Those of you in back bends, glutes on, hip flexors lengthening, that's it Finn. Really straighten the arms Finn. Yes. And you can come in and out of the back bend. If you're in a delicious twist, come back to center, center your pelvis and send the hips to the left a few inches, left thigh on top of the right. Delicious twist isn't a direct translation of the Sanskrit, I have to admit. <laughs> Good Finn, yes. That's it, Ellie. And great Fiona. Bring the knees a little bit in, Fiona, kind of magnetic slightly. Yeah. Feel the inner thighs.
And then when you are ready, just coming back to center, you might take the final posture of your choice. Maybe you fancy a shoulder stand or maybe you're good and you're ready for Shavasana. Yeah, Sisina. Those of you in shoulder stand, the big toes are touching, a little bit of space between the heels, sometimes nice. When you're ready, Shavasana awaits. So a closing reading, a slightly poignant poem by the poet Brian Patton. It's called Not Only. Not only the leaf shivering with delight, no. Not only the morning grass shrugging off the weight of frost, no. Not only the wings of the crane fly consumed by fire, no. Not only steam rising from the horse's back, no. Not only the sound of the sunflower roaring, no. Not only the golden spider spinning, no. Not only the cathedral window deep inside the raindrop, no. Not only the door opening at the back of the clouds, no. Not only flakes of light settling like snow, no. Not only the sky as blue and smooth as an egg, no. Not only these things, no. But without you, none of these things. Not only these things, no. But without you, none of these things.
So um, if you'd like longer in Shavasana, please feel free to stay. As we draw to a close, the breath deepening like endless oceans. Movement returning, riding on the tide of your breath. And coming to sit if you're doing so. So palms join like two halves becoming whole in front of the heart. <clears throat> bowing to the heart that it may be ocean-like, sky-like, vast and able to hold whatever life brings, spacious-hearted. We close here. So. <clears throat> Pleasure to see you all. Thanks for being here. So wishing you a beautiful Friday, end of the week, if it's the end of your week. And I will see many of you over the weekend and sending you all my love. I'll see you all very soon. I think quite a few of you have signed up to the next workshop, which the wonderful Sari and I are leading on Sunday the 21st, uh, 5 p.m. Restorative yoga and angelic healing. And if you want to know more about that, drop me a message. I'll see you all soon. All my love. Ciao, ciao. See you, Sari. Ciao, Andrew and Maria. Take care, Shadi. A pleasure, Alex and Lily and Lou. Great to have you here. Steph and Jamie and Fiona. Sending you all my love. Take care, Finn. Great to have you here, my love. Ciao, ciao.